So, what can we expect from Nuno Espirito Santo at Nottingham Forest? Well, it's a very intriguing appointment. We're going to break it down in this video best we can. There's still a lot of question marks about what we actually can expect, but I'm going to try and do it best. The face of a man that's just seen Chris Wood and Divock Origi are his only fit strikers. Nuno, what have you got yourself into, mate? <laughs> Early impressions are genuinely good. He speaks very well in his press conferences, definitely has ambition about him and if we're worried about losing that passion that Steve Cooper had in the connection to the fans, I mean, it's never going to be quite the same as that. It was sort of that you're going to get one in a hundred, honestly. It's that special what us and Cooper had. But no doubting Nuno can very well be loved and get behind the team and you know, have that really strong connection to the fan base. Like we see Cooper, is how a lot of Wolves fans see Nuno. He really is to them the best they've had in a very long while, like Cooper is to us. So that's only a positive thing. Fun fact, the two times that Nuno has played Forest, he beat us at the City Ground 2-1 in 2017, but one of the few defeats that Wolves had at Molyneux in that incredible promotion season in 17-18, we beat them 2-0. Goals from Ben Osborne and Kieran Dowell. I remember the shock, couldn't believe it. Forrest were nothing in that season and we beat Wolves. He's already spoken about the fan support. He knows how strong it is and how much we can use that to our advantage. I love the fact that he spoke about Steve Cooper in his conference. He didn't need to do that. The, the fact that he spoke so highly of him and you know you don't always get that. I think that's a really good thing. And he's clearly, very keen to improve things for us. He did also admit that it's the first time ever that he's having to work with a squad as big as this, and that does speak volumes. He's a manager that's very used to managing a small squad. He likes to manage small squads. He is normally quite a consistent manager tactically and just in terms of personnel, shape, you name it. That is everything that he doesn't have at Forest. It is probably as unstable as you can get in terms of the recruitment, the players that you then have to work with, constantly being in and out of the team formations, everything. Exclusive scenes here of Bolly, Gibbs White and Oreo rocking up to training, seeing that Nuno is back in charge of them. Hello. Hey, on, mate. Fancy seeing you here. So in lots of ways, I see Nuno potentially being, maybe, an upgraded version of Steve Cooper. And that is no disrespect to Cooper in the slightest, but if you look at it, he does set up quite similarly to Cooper, only better hopefully we're going to get into that but he also has that experience at this level which Cooper just does not have he was having to learn incredibly quickly on the job in an incredibly tough environment ambitious environment probably too much pressure on him really that he actually needed to have on him and it was just an impossible task for him and in the end Steve Cooper whereas Nuno he's been there and done it before and that's got to help Let's talk briefly a bit more in depth at what he's actually done in his career at those clubs that I've already mentioned. Well at Rio Ave, he got them to two cup finals and got them into the Europa League for the first time in their history. Rio Ave are not a club that typically do that, so that was a very good start to his managerial career. At Valencia, he got them into a top four finish, beat the likes of Real Madrid, Atletico Madrid, Sevilla in that season. No mugs at all, some of the biggest teams in the world especially. The first two. But Porto, he got them to a second place finish last 16 in the Champions League. That's nothing too bad. Of course, Porto want to try and win their league all the time, but it's still a decent finish, of course. And of course, at Wolves, everyone knows what he did there. Got them promoted in an incredible fashion in the Championship. One of the best teams, I think, to ever grace that division. The best thing about it after that is he then got them into Europe straight away. Two back-to-back -back seventh place finishes, a Europa League quarter final. And then, of course, a 13th place finish following that. That was in the COVID season, though, so I think that did play a part. Wolves had had to sell quite a few key players. And I think there was a number of things that kind of just ended up making it become a little bit flat. But Wolves fans towards the end of that tenure were still well behind him, just like we were well behind Cooper. And I think that really speaks volumes. Of course, though, at Spurs, didn't really go to plan 17 games there but a very tough environment, a totally different sort of level to what he would have been used to. I don't really think you can read too much into it. He didn't get that long at the end of the day. And in Saudi Arabia, he won the cup 
and league title. Something that that club that I can't pronounce haven't done in five years win the league title. Did you know it's the first time that Nuno's ever going to come into a team midway through a season? He's always started at a new club at the start of a season until now. So tactically, it's a bit tough to call because he has adapted an awful lot throughout his career. But if you look at Wolves specifically, what I think everyone knows him for best, he consistently played a three at the back formation, either 5-4-3 or 3-4-3. Three, particularly in the Championship, but especially, well, no, also at the start of the Premier League years for Wolves, those two seventh place finishes. And it worked very well, wing-backs being very, very important. And this is exactly what Cooper did in the Championship and even at times in the Premier League. So could that mean the likes of Nico Williams, Toffolo, Sergio who he's managed before, Ola Aina, could Montiel and Tavares somehow get back into the mix? Fullbacks, or more like wing backs, actually, could actually end up being very important to the way we play going forward. If we look at this team, a 2 0 win against Derby in this game, no reason why I picked that match at all. This is a typical Nuno team in the Championship. You see the shape of it. I have a feeling that's the kind of thing that he may very well set up. Again, it, it might not be, but given the fact that Forrest are quite prone to playing throughout the back the last few years, I wouldn't be surprised if Nuno reverted to that sort of thing. He didn't play it that much at Spurs or in Saudi Arabia, so that's interesting. Was that one of the reasons why he failed at Spurs? Possibly, because he kind of moved away from where he would normally go. And his final season at Wolves, he adapted significantly more and it kind of didn't work because they dropped off a bit, as I've already said. But first few seasons at Wolves, it was his benchmark. It was what he was known for. So I think it's interesting that Cooper, of course, played through at the back an awful lot with wing backs, but it didn't particularly work in terms of the style and, and system. Whereas Nuno does definitely appear to be a lot more adaptable as a manager in terms of not just the shape and personnel, but the way we're actually moving, you know, and using the ball and in and out of possession play. I think Nuno's got a lot more batting than Cooper in that regard at least, hopefully, but not even hopefully, he's done it before, we've seen it at this level, at a higher level than what we're playing at, and a European level sort of side back then. One thing that he said in his press conference is he demands hard work. Everyone has a chance to prove themselves a fresh start, and this is something that I think is huge because in that Fulham game, we saw the effort levels were unacceptable from pretty much every single player. So this is something that I think Nuno can really iron out players like Sangara and Origi. We've criticised them for their effort. Are they fully invested and on board with the project? Well, would Nuno have let them put that performance in? And this is one of the very few criticisms I can have of Cooper. Sometimes some people have said Cooper's a bit too soft on the players and I do see where they're coming from. Nuno, from what I can tell from what Wolfsons have been saying about him, is he's like a no-nonsense approach. If you step out of line, he'll make sure you know about it. But he will also definitely put your arm around you if you need it. And I think that's a good balance. And I really hope we see those demanding effort levels, you know, be fulfilled at Forest. And another thing I also heard from a Wolves fan as well, Dazzling Dave, a Wolves fan channel, I saw him talk about Nuno in a lot of detail. He basically said injuries were something that didn't really happen that much under Nuno. And that's something that happens an awful lot at Forest. And is it because of the way that Nuno just plays? He doesn't risk players as much? Or is it just the fact that our medical team isn't good enough? I really hope, whatever it is, Nuno brings it to Forest because I'm genuinely really bored of players getting injured. It's also interesting, of course, that he's going to know Willie Bodley and Morgan Gibbs White and Serge Aurier. So. I think that's a good start. He's already praised Morgan very highly. There's a lot of criticism saying how oh, he doesn't get on with him, but I think that's been proven straight away that he does. And he's a completely different player to when Nuno had him. And then Bolly, well, he was an absolutely key part of that championship promotion season. And then in the Premier League too, I think Bolly's going to be a really, really big player under Nuno. Serge, of course, was one of those players that played with him at Spurs and that didn't go that well. So can we really read too much into that? But at the very least, they'll know each other. I'm really keen to hear what you think of Nuno. There's definitely a few grey areas. Yes, he struggled at Spurs. It was a bit stale at the end of Wolves. And there was that FA Cup semi-final that he kind of threw away. They were 2 0 up with 10 minutes left and they lost. And that was kind of by going a bit too safe and pragmatic. But ultimately, his record speaks for itself. He's a proven manager. He gets results, especially at this level. 
uh, and I think this is something that we can definitely be excited by. I thank Cooper more than anything, but could this be a massive stroke? Could it be what we need? But even so, if in like five games time we've lost four of them, I mean, you know, what are we going to be saying then? Are we going to be questioning Nuno then? You know, are we going to be saying, oh, we should have kept other Cooper? It's so difficult to call whether this is truly a good replacement following on from a club legend, in my opinion. It's, it's, it's a really big moment. It's a really big moment. And I really hope it works and it needs to work. We've got to get behind Nuno now on Saturday. And he clearly seems up for it as well, which is fantastic to see. If you have enjoyed this little video previewing what we could see potentially from Nuno Espirito Santo at Nottingham Forest, then please do hit the like button. Subscribe to Rads if you're new. It goes a very long way. Really appreciate it. Of course, I'm going to be covering the Bournemouth game and all games going forward. And what could end up being either a poor appointment or a very good one, for all we know. I hope it's the latter. Thanks for watching, everyone. Come on, you Rads.